This is an abandoned bank that was constructed in 1929 and closed for good in 2005 after the building was used for a short time as the Department of Motor Vehicles. It's six stories tall with two vaults, a massive main lobby, and five floors of offices. It's in rough shape these days with vandalism pretty rampant throughout, leaking roofs and broken windows. There's even a small fire on the third floor back in 2011. But like all abandoned places, it's still got some beauty in it and I think it's worth showing. We're gonna start at the bottom level and I mean the absolute bottom. There's an entrance into the basement through one of the old hatches, so let's head down and start there. Look at that. Oh, hold on. Hang on. Let me put some light in there. It's pitch black. The reason we really wanted to start in the basement is because we knew there was something super interesting down there. We just didn't know where. When the bank was built back in 1929, the foundation was laid and the main vault was constructed in the basement out of steel reinforced concrete. Bank vaults are always custom built and this one was constructed pretty standard for the time. The vault itself is about two feet thick with the door being over a thousand pounds. So we knew we had to find it. It was just a matter of navigating the basement. What do they do down here? Oh, things are dripping on me. That's oh, gross. <laughs> Ceiling's dripping. You know what you don't see down here? Graffiti. Yeah, it's pitch black. I don't understand people's objectives. <laughs> that looks like a doorway out over there. I mean, you can't really see it from. Yeah, it's probably to the front of the building. Can you shine your light down there? At the door. Oh, that's like a cage elevator. Pipe that just collapsed. I don't know if you get a shopping cart. I don't know if you get a shopping cart. We turned another corner, and there it was. Oh my god, this is the vault. Let's do a pretty good one. Unfortunately, the vault was completely empty, not even a penny left behind, just some graffiti on the walls.
With the vault found, it was time to head upstairs to the first floor, where the main lobby was located. The classical revival theme building is a steel framed brick and concrete structure. The foundation on the street is actually made of polished granite. It was modeled after the bank's headquarters and had a glazed arcade banking space on the first floor, which was especially beautiful because of the tall Corinthian pillars that rise up to the natural lighting skylights. I mentioned that this abandoned bank was modeled after its headquarters, which is also still standing, but in much better condition. This is the original headquarters constructed in 1919, and you can really see the similarities in the architecture. The tall windows, Corinthian pillars, and detailed ceiling. Unlike the branch we've been exploring, the headquarters had a much different fate when the bank officially closed. It was repurposed as the library for the Rhode Island School of Design, or RISD. Comparing the photos, you can really see how beautiful this place could have been if the owners had found a new use for it. Well, records, right? Now, after they get stamped. I'm assuming these are all... Because, like, that the box. 664 bucks. Oh. Okay, there is actually another vault in here behind the main lobby that you have to walk through some of the back offices to get to. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get into this one because it has the steel bars blocking the way. Even if we could get inside, it's completely empty, just like the one in the basement. The vault has another entrance on the opposite side. We went over there and the door is impossible to open and I'll just show you that we tried. So th on this side, so the other side is actually closed mm -hmm. because there's bars blocking it. Yeah. But can this be opened? It's not locked. Actually, look, it's not even on the track anymore. So Eric tried to open it, but due to the extreme rust on the vault door and the fact that it was sagging off the tracks, it just could not be opened. Uh, I don't know, because like, if you look at it, this doesn't line up with the actual locker. Yeah, it's, well, it's sagging now. It's so heavy. We couldn't get in, but there was still a lot more to check out here.
Above the lobby are five floors of offices that were used by the bank staff. The layout is the same on every floor, which made navigating here a lot easier than the basement. We could also see where we were going, so that definitely helped too. This is the room that had the fire in 2011, and it's easily in the worst shape out of any other room in the building. The rest of the offices are pretty bare now. There are old documents on the floor, papers, old cash checks, but everything is falling apart, and everything of value was removed in 2005 when the last tenants left the building. After checking out all of the offices, it was time to head out. Okay, we know what it's like now, and we know what this bank could have been, but are there any plans for it in the future? The Rhode Island Hospital Trust Building used to house one of Rhode Island's DMV branches. And now it's a shell of its former self dilapidated and damaged, but the city is trying to find someone to restore it. The 33,000 square foot building was built in 1930. It's five stories and is located across from City Hall. But it's also sustained extensive damage since the last occupant, the city's Department of Motor Vehicle offices, relocated in 2005. It's sad to see it in this condition. People have come and taken a look at it. Uh, different types of uses, mostly uh, residential conversion uh, for mixed use, commercial on the first floor and residential on the top floors. Uh, and also we had a few people that were interested in, in a hotel. The council even passed a resolution to boost tourism and promote local businesses and hotel expansion. Mansiri calls it a win-win. Ultimately, it's the cost to renovate the building, not just purchase it, that's causing the delays. Nevertheless, city leaders hope it's well worth the investment. All right, so this is our way out right here. We're climb up the ladder from the basement, and then we're good. So no plans right now, and the costs to renovate seem way too high for anything. It's likely this place will be demolished, which is really unfortunate. Big thanks to my friends Susie and Eric for their help exploring and capturing this place and their patience with me while I got every shot imaginable. If you like this video, be sure to visit my YouTube channel and website to see my entire Abandoned From Above web series where I cover interesting abandoned locations throughout New England.